backyard the job site um, uh, she will interview me so I just leave it open this is a live stream and uh, you are looking at the Parapod 4G17 uh, the backyard version of the Greenwich uh, Rock and uh, basically rock punk I dig um, four feet deep and um, yeah and then place the pond liner to form uh, um, uh, a pound uh, sort of and then I add uh, one inch drainage uh, rock into the pond so basically fill the the whole thing with rocks right drainage rocks and then fills with water so basically we use the the water and the um, the rock you know to fill this uh, space you know this is the foundation right this is the thermal mass and the rocks uh, as you know it's um, without water it's an insulator right uh, but with water it's it's a heat you know a conductor right so this way you know we can have this coupling you know uh, we can simply by adjusting the water level we can you know control the humidity right also control uh, uh, how well right we conduct the heat the heat so there there will be um, uh, heat exchange with the uh, soap reservoir so as you can see there is um, four uh, rain barrels on the right hand side right and there's uh, also added uh, four more uh, to uh, a sub tank for each you see there's a four bathtub right the four bathtub each actually I, I like to uh, make each uh, 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 you know uh, sand ponics uh, you know four individual independent uh, sand ponic system so I haven't actually finished the project you know I need to uh, do the uh, cut the um, the gutters you know into four sections so that each one you know it is working for itself right uh, so for independent uh, sand ponic system uh, yeah probably after the interview I'll continue the work uh, but now yeah um, I'm going to probably I'm gonna uh, yeah do the cutting and then just uh, you know close the you know place on the, the cap and seal it you know apply silicone right then Hopefully, after a few hours, I, I can use it. Okay, see you there. A Kelowna couple is building a new type of greenhouse right in their own backyard. It's called a pyropod. It uses the sun, water, and soap bubbles to create and store thermal energy to grow food all year round. The CBC's Dana Kelly met up with the builders to find out how it works. This is relatively dry. This is wet. Yeah. This is wet bubbles. This is a dry bubbles. The dry bubbles last longer, actually. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, so my name is Aubrey Zhang. Um, what we're doing here is uh, basically building a backyard uh, new type of greenhouse that use the uh, bubbles to insulate and use water to cool the greenhouse in the summertime. What exactly do the bubbles do? There's two layers of, of you know uh, fabric and to close you know to form a cavity and so within the cavity we either spray water or you know fill with bubbles you know when you need to insulate. For example we have right winter time very cold right what do you do? Right, insulate using bubbles. Especially when you grow a uh, plant inside, right? You don't want too much sunshine. Some people use black cloth, right, to create the shade. But in our case, we can simply use bubble. Right now, I'm uh, spraying uh, soap uh, soap liquid into that uh, two uh, bubble generators. So you see the liquid flowing, right? We're gonna see a thin film of water flowing down. So that cools. The greenhouse right yeah summertime you want to cool but the winter time you want to 
uh, insulate, contain the heat. This is a solar, basic solar thermal, right? Solar thermal in action. We use the water to take the solar thermal energy and store it. Store it in the tank. That's why you see the tank. Lots of tanks, actually. We can fill the entire cavity in two minutes. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the bubble will go through the fan and, and, and be crushed. So we can make it happen like this, and we can make it disappear like this. Wow. Yeah, on demand. How long have you been working on this? And second <laughs> of all, where did this idea come from? I got interested in this solar thermal thing uh, when we I was back in nine, 2011. So uh, a friend came, he smoked, right? I said, let's go out, you know? So I, I talked to him outside while he's, he was smoking. Then uh, at a point, I lost my balance. So my hand touched the door. And it's, I think the temperature is minus 20 something, you know, winter time, right? And then I felt this, hot, you know, burning hot. You know, I have to <laughs> take my hand off the door. I said, oh, this is open air, right? This is winter, right? It's so hot, right? So that got me interested. S uh, nine months ago, I met uh, Richard Nelson. He happened to be an inventor, a prolific inventor. So Richard Nelson was the person who discovered it, who uh, promoted, uh, who did all the R&D, you know? And then, uh, yeah, I'm the one who commercialized. This is the first yeah, the first prototype, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hi, I'm Margaret, I'm Aubrey's wife. So again, Margaret, how are you feeling with this in your, your backyard? It's taking up uh, quite a bit of space. <laughs> <laughs> I almost have to, yeah. Um, I had cancer, um, yeah. and, and one of the things after I had cancer, Aubrey said, is I want to, you know, grow food for my wife that so that we won't have right. any the, you know, chemicals or, or the, you know, pesticides and stuff. So, so that's also part of the reason we're building this, right? At first, I really couldn't <laughs> accept it. You know, it just scared me to, yeah, <laughs> to <and help>. you. <laughs> It scared me what, you know, this was going to cost. You yeah. know what we're gonna sink into it yeah. <laughs> um so far <laughs> so far we've you know spent maybe 30 to forty thousand yeah. on this but he's been doing it for quite a few years we've yeah. tried it you know the regular sand ponics to see that it works it does grow lots of things um, we had fish you know growing in there too what are the fish going to be doing fish poop actually is gonna uh, be pumped into yes. the right. the, yeah. the grow bed yeah. to provide the fertilizer. That's right. And then the, the and the the water uh, that will also be pumped up there. It will drain through the sand. Yeah. It will clean the water. The sand will clean the water and go back to right. the fish. So yeah. it's uh, uh, it's yeah. all timed. It'll run on timers. Yeah. Uh, Every two hours, I, I I pump the water for only 10 minutes. That's enough to, you know, create the moisture needed in the grow bed. Uh, the bacteria is doing the work. Bacteria will turn the ammonium into nitrate. Uh, so the bacteria need oxygen. So when you don't pump the water, the oxygen, the air get into the sand and then help the bacteria to, you know, flood, you know, to grow a large amount, uh, quantity, right? And then doing the work. Yeah. So how yeah. much uh, food do you think you'll be able to produce in here? If you, you know, utilize the whole area, then you, you can grow lots of food. I tried everything. The grape, you know, the, the fig tree, you know, <laughs> the, the, the tomatoes. Anything you cut, you stick in the sand. And then just in a week or so, you got lots of root. Because the bubble will create a shade, right? And also cool at the same time. Uh, this is not high tech. This is, we call it low tech, high science. Can yeah. I get a little closer so I, can, I want to try to get sure, the sure. sound yeah, of know, the, the bubbles? Uh, have a bubble bath. Wow, so look at this. very <laughs> cool. Oh my gosh, I'm getting right in here. Oh my goodness. Yeah. This is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> That was Aubrey Jang and his wife, Margaret, talking with the CBC's Dana Kelly. If you'd like to learn more about the greenhouse and the technology at work, you can check out pyrapod.com.